Hi, my name is Mark Syme. I am the minister of the Northfield Church of Christ in Northfield, New Jersey. I would like to extend this opportunity to welcome you to our evening services for Sunday, June the 25th. We sing from Songs of Faith and Praise at Northfield. And so I will give you the number of the song and the title, just in case you don't have that book and uh, you can find the song in your own book or Google it so that you might be able to sing along with us. The first song that we'll sing this evening is number 761. 761. The title of this song is Prince of Peace, Control My Will. Prince of Peace, Control My Will. <clears throat> Prince of peace, control my will. <clears throat> Bid the struggling heart be still. Bid my fears and doubting cease. Hush my spirit into peace. Thou hast bought me with thy blood, open wide the gate of God. Peace I ask, but peace must be, Lord, in being one with thee. May thy will, not mine, be done. May thy will and mine be one. Chase these doubtings from my heart. Now of thy perfect peace impart. Savior, at thy feet I fall. Thou my life, my God, my all. Let thy happy servant be one forevermore with thee. We are going to go to 681. 681. The title of this song is More Holiness Give Me. 681, more holiness give me. <clears throat> more holiness give me, more strivings within, more patience and suffering, more sorrow for sin, more faith in my Savior, more sense of His care, more joy in His service, more purpose in prayer. More gratitude. 
gratitude give me more trust in the Lord, more pride in His glory, more hope in His word, more tears for His sorrows, more pain and His grief. More meekness and trial, more praise for relief, more purity give me, more strength to overcome, more freedom from earth stains. More longings for home, more fit for the kingdom, more useful I'd be, more blessed and holy, more Savior like thee. And before the Lord's Supper. We will sing number 705, A Common Love. 705, A Common Love. <clears throat> a common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond. Holding us to the Lord, a common strength when we're weary, a common hope for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's word. A common love for each other, a common gift to the Savior, a common bond holding us to the Lord. A common strength when we're weary, a common hope, for tomorrow, a common joy in the truth of God's Word. We come to this part of the Lord's uh, service by uh, observing communion or the Lord's Supper. Uh, Jesus instituted this on the night he was betrayed. He met with his disciples and uh, he explained to them, uh, he explained to them what was going to happen, and he explained how his uh, body would be sacrificed and his blood would be shed. And with that, uh, he gave thanks for the bread, and he th gave thanks for the cup. The Apostle Paul, in the 11th chapter of 1 Corinthians, took what Jesus did, uh, even though Paul was not there when Jesus instituted the Lord's Supper, and almost uh, word for word explained what the Lord's Supper is to us. Uh, for in the night in which he was betrayed, Jesus took bread. And so as we gather about the Lord's table, we gather as a memorial. Just as we have memorials in real life, this is the most important memorial that we have in our Christian life, that Jesus came to earth to teach, to be the perfect person, uh, the only one that has ever existed, and finally to give himself up as a ransom for each one of us. So as we partake of these emblems, let's remember our suffering Savior on the cross. Let's pray for the bread. Our God and Heavenly Father, we can't even imagine the agony that Jesus was in when he was nailed to that cross. We can't even imagine how he must have felt as he was ridiculed and mocked. And we can't even imagine how 
he felt when he took the sins of the world upon him. And so as we would take of the bread, we remember the body that hung on the cross for each one of us. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. And then Jesus gave thanks for the fruit of the vine. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, we come before you knowing that Jesus shed his innocent blood that we might live. We know that blood is the material in our body that carries those things to the body that keep us alive. And as life flowed from Jesus with the blood flowing out from his body, we remember that Jesus paid the price for each one of us. And that blood that Jesus shed is the blood that washes away our sins. Bless us as we partake of this cup. We ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. With the Lord's Supper completed, we also know that on the first day of the week, uh, Christians were told to lay by in store that which they had prospered. And so we think at this time about giving back to the Lord. The Lord has always wanted us to give back to him, even when the children of Israel, uh, even before they were the children of Israel, when Abraham gave back. We're told to sacrifice. We're told that we were to, are to give as we have prospered. And we are told that our Lord loves a cheerful giver. Uh, let's pray for the offering at this time. Dear Heavenly Father, we're so grateful that we have the opportunity at this time to give back to you. We understand that all good things come from you. We understand that we came into this world with nothing and physically we will leave with nothing. But what we have, we give to you so that your word might be spread, so that others may come to understand the truth that lies within you as our God and Jesus as our Savior. Be with us as we give. Help us to do so with an open mind and open heart and be the cheerful givers that we are called to be. We pray this in his most holy name. Amen. The last song we'll sing before the lesson is number 422. We'll sing it through twice. Spirit of the living God, 422. Spirit of the living God. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me. Spirit of the living God, Fall fresh on me, Spirit of the living God, Fall fresh on me, Spirit of the living God, Fall fresh on me. Melt me, mold me, fill me, use me, Spirit of the living God, fall fresh on me. 
I hope you enjoyed singing as much as I did. I know the Lord was praised. I know that I was uplifted. I hope the Lord uh, accepted this praise in the, in the vein that it was meant to praise him as our living God. If you were there this morning, uh, you heard that tonight's lesson was about how God measures us. How God measures us. The text of this lesson comes from the tail end of the book of the prophet Ezekiel. In the 40th chapter through chapter 42, we find that this section of Ezekiel is all about measurement. If you have your Bibles or you have your devices that have your Bibles stored up, you might want to turn to Ezekiel chapter 40 and see the term measurement being used over and over and over again. The subheading in my Bible on chapter 40 says, Vision of the man with a measuring rod. And so, uh, the measurement started to go on in verse 5. It says, And behold, there was a wall on the outside of the temple all around, and in the man's hand was a measuring rod of six cubits, each of which was a cubit and a hand breadth. So he measured the thickness of the wall, one rod, the height, and one rod. So he measured the wall. And in verse 11, he measured the width of the wall. And then in verse 17, it says, He brought me to the outer court, and there were chambers made of pavement. And as for the gate of the outer uh, court, in verse 20, he measured again and took Ezekiel to the south and measured from the south porches. He took Ezekiel to the inner court and measured that, and he brought him toward the east of the inner court and continued to measure. And so as we go through chapter 40 and chapter 41, the measurement continues. In chapter 41, the measurement is of the inner temple. He measured the length and the width and the breadth of the building. And then in chapter 42, he measured the chambers of the temple, the thickness of the walls, uh, the chambers that were there. And in verse 15, it says, Now when he had finished measuring the inner house, he brought me out by the way of the gate which faced toward the east and measured it all around. And he measured on the east side with the measuring reed, 500 reeds by the measuring end. And so we see this measuring going on. But what was it all about? Was it just about measuring? Well, to me, we have to get down to Ezekiel chapter 42, verse 20, to see what the measuring was really all about. In verse 20, he said, he measured it on the four sides. It had a wall all around and the length 500 and the width 500. Okay, now you're getting this? And here is the sum of this whole story. In the 20th verse of the 42nd chapter of Ezekiel, where it said, to divide between the holy and the profane. That was the real measurement that was going on. He was measuring to make sure that the children of Israel separated the holy things from the profane things. All right, what does that have to do with you and I today? What I would propose to you this evening is that God continues to measure us. He continues to measure us 
and according to his expectation. The question I want to answer today is, how does God measure us today? Let's get to a couple of important New Testament scriptures. In John chapter 14 and verse 15, Jesus said, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And John also wrote in 1 John chapter 2 verse 4, If anyone says, I know him, but doesn't keep his commandments, he is a liar. And so I would propose to you this evening that the first way that God measures us is as to whether we keep his commandments. Now, the children of Israel were told to keep the commandments. But more importantly, to you and I today, to you and I, on June the 25th, 2023, are still to keep the commandments of the Lord. The final book in our Bible, the book of Revelation, in Revelation chapter 20 and verse 12, it says, On that day God will open the scripture books and judge us according to our deeds. We are to keep his commandments and then we are showing that we keep his commandments by the deeds that we do. Sometimes James in the book of James is maligned and, and sometimes people look at it and sit, talk about faith and works and they think that James and, and Paul are at odds with one another, but indeed they're not. In the book of James, James says, you show me your faith and I'll show you my faith by the deeds that I do. The deeds that we do are such that these are what are used as God continues to measure us. We are to be people that literally and figuratively strive to follow Jesus's teachings. Now, you know what? Uh, you know, in, in gymnastics, uh, there is a grading system. And it, the, the top number is 10, almost impossible to do. And so if someone scores a 10 in a performance in gymnastics, we say that's a perfect score. You and I will never be perfect. We'll never score an exact 10 in life. We have grace for that. We have grace to help us when we fall short. That, that wonderful life-giving grace that God offers us through Jesus' sacrifice. But make no mistake about it. We will be measured by the word of God. We will be measured by the scriptures. We'll be measured by the truths that are found in God's word. And so with that in mind, are there any other ways that God measures us? Well, I would propose to you this evening that he measures us to see how well we do when things aren't just going along the way we would like them to go along. Another way that we are measured is through the trials that we go through day by day. Peter said this in 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 6 and 7. He says that Christians will face trials, and his exact words are testing their faith. God measures us 
by seeing how well we do when things aren't going as well as we would like them to go. When we face trials, I certainly believe this is one of God's ways of measuring us because it shows how powerful our faith is. You know, uh, it, it would be easy to have faith if the road were always smooth and we would say, well, you know, everything is going along so perfectly well. Wow, it's so easy for me to have faith. But when there is the speed bump, when there's the hiccup in life, whenever uh, the smooth skin turns into a wart here and there, how well do we hold up when we are experiencing trials? Some people, unfortunately, when they experience trials, walk away from the Lord. What the Lord says to us is when you experience trials, walk toward the Lord. Get closer to the Lord because the Lord is measuring us. James tells us, blessed are we when we are persecuted because it is through persecution that God indeed measures us. We can't walk away because that would be the wrong thing to do. We should walk toward the Lord. God uses these ways to measure us. And pardon me if I use the terminology uh, to describe itself, to see how we measure up. <laughs> to see how we measure up. We gonna get on a scale to measure how tall we are, how much we weigh, excuse me. When we were children, uh, we put a line on the wall and, and got a pencil and measured our growth. There comes a time when, when we stop growing vertically. Unfortunately for many of us, uh, uh, there is not a time that we stop growing in pounds. We have to obviously watch our diet to control that. And so we have a way of measuring it. We have a way of stepping on a scale and to see uh, whether we've been doing the right things and our weight falls within the parameters of where it should be. And so uh, what do we do? What do we do when all of a sudden we step on the scale and the reading is higher than we want it to be. Now is the time to make a decision. Now is the time to say, I'm eating the wrong kind of foods. I'm not exercising enough. And here we are in our Christian life. The Lord says you're supposed to be eating the right foods. The right foods are the scriptures the word of God by which we are measured. Uh, the, the diet uh, that we should be on, the exercise that we should be involved in is keeping the commandments of God. This is how God measures us. If we keep his commandments. And so when we face judgment one day, and all of us will. We will be measured by how well we adhered to God's word and how we put God's word into practice in our lives. Whether we did the will of God, whether we took the truth of God's word and we turned it into a great faith a great faith that is accompanied by the deeds that we do. Uh, it's as simple as something that we talked about just a few moments ago. When we give back to the Lord, that's a deed that we are instructed to live by, to give back to the Lord that 
which is his. It was always that way, even through the Old Testament days. God measured them then, and he continues to measure us now. And when that judgment day comes, we will be judged. <laughs> we will be measured by how godly a life that we led. We will be measured as to whether we did God's will in our life, that we followed his word, that we obeyed his commandments. And then even so, God will look at us and say, you know what? He'll either say this, you faced persecution, you faced trials, and you used my word to get your way through these persecutions and these trials. So just as in Ezekiel's day, measurement was done. And let's remember the the final measurement was to, to divide between the holy and the profane. And that's what's going to happen to us at judgment. We will either be marked as holy or profane. I hope this lesson hit home a little bit this evening. Uh, we need to have God in our lives. We need to be his children if we hope to measure up to his expectations. We become his children by accepting Jesus into our lives, by confessing indeed that Jesus is the Son of the living God, by saying to God, I'm sorry for the things that I've done. I want to repent of these things. And finally, that overt, overt way of showing by being baptized into Jesus Christ. If you haven't done that and you need to come to the Lord, uh, this is the opportunity. If you need to do it right now, give us a call. We will be at your service. We will help you to become a child of God. I hope that this message was uh, such that uh, we all learned a little bit from it and understand how uh, the measurement in our lives is what we will be judged by. Let's all pray together. Our God and Heavenly Father, we're so grateful for the time that we've had this evening to come before you, to sing praises, to observe the Lord's Supper, and to just hear a portion of your word that uh, hopefully will uh, move us in the right direction. I just ask that you would continue to be with us. I ask that you would uh, uh, help us to be your humble servants. I ask that you would uh, spur us on toward keeping your commandments. We know that's up to us, but through your grace, we know that uh, you love us and you care for us. Continue to be with us. Help us to look at our bulletins here at Northfield and see those on our prayer list and keep those in our minds and on our hearts in our prayer. Be with us this evening. Help us to uh, take uh, God with us as we put our heads on our pillows and we uh, think of how great our God is. Continue to be with us. I pray this in Jesus' most holy name. Amen. Please be safe, and may God bless you all. I'm in the way, the bright and shining way. I'm in the glory land, glory land way. Telling the world that Jesus saves today. Yes, I'm in the glory.